Hello everybody, and here we are, finally, it's about time. Um, I got some named rosters, fully named, and I checked them kind of just to make sure they were at least accurate, and looks like, for the most part, they're accurate. Um, and I got the rosters from Pasta Padre, uh, if you use that gamer tag, it's just one word, Pasta Padre. <laughs> if you're not familiar, it's a sports website, uh, sports gaming website. And uh, they have fully named rosters, so I am starting the dynasty, um, ready to go, and we're going to create a new coach. Now, I didn't know what I was going to name the coach, but it doesn't really matter, because that's not really the focus of the dynasty. So I went into a random name generator, because why not, and this is what I got. So uh, I'm not going to use my real name, because I don't want... I don't like putting that out there on YouTubes, but this is the name that I got on a random name generator, so there you go. Rex Castle, Cassell, Castle, whatever. And they have some new coach faces this year. They only had like seven last year, and then I guess they added like ten more, so there you go. Doesn't really matter. We don't really see the coach too much, so yeah, Alma Mater is Nebraska. That is my team. Well, I mean, that's... In, in real life and stuff. Like, that's not the Dynasty team that I'm using. Um, now, the playbook, I'm just going to leave it at Nebraska for now, but I'm not going to use that playbook. Um, I'll go change it before our first game. Because I I need to go actually look at playbooks and see which one I want to use. Um, I have an idea of the style. Um, as you guys saw in my last couple of Dynasties, um, which both kind of had issues as far as success goes. I like running a 3-4 defense, so um, that's that. And for those of you that also maybe are new, I like running the ball a lot um, in the option. So there you go. Now we're going to look at things like, first let's not do generate auto names. Um, coach progression now, for those of you that maybe are unaware, uh, they added leveling up like an RPG element to coaching so you can level up your coach and it's really cool um, so set coach starting level will be default that'll be fine uh, progression rate I, from what I've done a few tests and what I've seen coaches progress a little too quickly so I think I'm going to do slow there's also slowest but I don't want to do it like that you can do fast, fastest, normal I think slow is going to be the way to go because we don't want it to be too easy um, as far as far as progression goes, but still there needs to be some progression to be had. So there you go. Um, here we're going to be looking at my settings. Uh, both offense and defense will be Heisman difficulty. User versus user is irrelevant because I'm playing against the computer all the time. Injuries fatigue on quarter length six minutes is pretty much optimum for doing a YouTube dynasty. So there you go. I'm going to stay with normal game speed. I lowered the speed threshold to 40. Uh, 50 is default. Um, and that's going to allow a little bit more difference in speed between players. Because I noticed on default, a lot of players were getting run down from behind when they are really fast players. So there does need to be some separation, but not too much. I'm leaving all penalties at default uh, just because. And here... I did adjust a few sliders, because um, I noticed QB accuracy was a little too high. Pass coverage could use a slight boost. There are a little bit too many interceptions, but as you can see, none of the slider changes were really too drastic. I only made um, an adjustment of 5 or 10, and for the computer, it's basically the exact same thing. Um, I tend to do that, like, I like to keep the settings between me and the computer even and fair unless there is a distinct advantage um, that either I or the computer may have, but usually that's not the case. So, here we have custom conferences. I'm not going to mess with this, um, and I actually probably won't. There will be one change that I'm going to make in year two, but um, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, but I'm not going to make any uh, huge changes, even if it's realistic. I think... Everything's pretty good where it is, as far as the conferences go for this dynasty. I don't want to mess with too much. 
who am I going to be? Well, pretty much everybody knows. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. My throat's been a little acting up today. But uh, everybody knows you guys voted on it, and it was a landslide. Like, it was not even close. Uh, Old Dominion won the vote. So we are going to roll with them. And uh, I got to gotta tell you guys, looking at Old Dominion, and this is pretty cool. You can look at a team's history now. Old Dominion is in their first year as an FBS team, so moving up from the FCS, so they don't have their history from the last X amount of years, but the game actually keeps track of like history and things like that, which is really cool. It makes it a lot of fun to go back and look at past years and stuff in Dynasty, so... Um, but I gotta tell you, you guys made a good decision, because uh, Old Dominion, they've got some, some nice uniforms, a nice stadium... So, at least that's appealing. They might not... We might have a hard time succeeding at first, but... Um, there you go. Target wins per year is five. And uh, here we go. I'm going to sign the contract. And boom! Welcome to the coach skill tree. Alright, so we can select upgrades and stuff, and we do have one upgrade available. So, there's game management, recruiting, and then we have defensive and offensive coordinators as well. So they have their own separate trees. Um, I think I want to go into recruiting first because I think that's important when you're starting with a small team and a new coach especially. Um, so we can either put it into scouting or locksmith. Hmm. I think locksmith would be good. There we go. Boom. And then we can also, uh, we also have an upgrade for the offensive coordinator. Players got off their blocks quickly to stop the run. Your defense causes fits for the opposition with tenacious pass rush. Or stay healthy. Hmm, that might be good since, like, <clears throat> there are so many teams that run up-tempo up offenses in this game. It's, like, ridiculous. Might be good to, uh, have that... Have that boost to fatigue, or to stamina, I should say. Alright, stay healthy. I don't run up-tempo offense, so that's not really going to benefit me. But I do like protecting the football. So there you go. Um, we all got those upgraded right off the bat. So yeah, there you go. We're going to be building our recruiting board. Now this is all live commentary right now. Um, it's not going to be this way for most of the Dynasty. But I thought it's important to do live commentary for this video. Because I can explain the things that are that I'm doing. Explain the things that I'm going on. As I'm doing them so that way it makes more sense than me going back and doing post commentary with editing and it sometimes feels a little rushed so recruiting strategy got to do this first because I don't want any computer assistance on recruiting otherwise they just like add players to your board that don't really even make sense so our team needs let's get a look at our team needs we're looking at we need a fullback, um, even though we have a freshman, I think we, yeah, we just have one fullback, so could use another guy, kicker, well, yeah, that's, that's not good, <laughs> kicker, and then we need a middle linebacker and a free safety, because we're graduating two free safeties, well, if we look at our school's recruiting uh, grades, we don't have a lot of high level grades and this these three right here are going to be the ones that we rely on for high level uh, recruiting bonuses now recruiting has changed this year and I think I may include more about recruiting because it is going to be less time consuming than last year and that's what kind of kept me away from focused like putting more recruiting in the videos because it was such a pain to do um, but this year they actually refined the recruiting a lot a lot better it's a lot better this year so uh, we have three pipeline states Texas New Jersey and Virginia um, not too much but those are pretty solid states to have especially Texas so that's pretty good um, I don't know where I was going with that. Spark 100, let's just get a quick look. I'm not really going to have a chance at any of these recruits at all. They're the best guys in the country. But number one is Chris Clark, a wide receiver. 
Six one two fourteen. That's a pretty uh, that's a solid receiver right there. Chaz Markhart, tight end. Jeremy Newberry, athlete. Paul Ellis, halfback. So, wow, there's not even a quarterback in the top ten. Not even in the top twenty. Where's the first quarterback? Wow. There we go. Anthony Green, a pocket passer out of Virginia, which is where Old Dominion is located. Right in Virginia, if you guys didn't know. Alright, guys. I uh, got my recruiting board. I got 20 players right now. If I, any if I add anybody else, I will certainly show them when that happens. But um, with my needs and everything, I've pretty much added the players that I think will best fit what I'm going for um, and the kind of team that I'm looking to build here is um, a little bit different than what Old Dominion runs right now. They run an air raid offense currently but I'm looking to make them more into the kind of team that I like to play as and that's a little bit more uh, run based team kind of I formation and includes some option elements as well so and obviously, I mean, we do need to be able to pass because you can't just run all the time. But, you know, the main ideas that will be centered around running backs and uh, athletic quarterbacks. So that's what we're going for. But right now, we're looking just to fill the needs um, at this point before we get into any other extra recruiting. So here we go. We have Justin Matthews, fullback. And he's from Ridgewood, New Jersey, a blocking fullback. And we're just going to look at um, the different little screens you can look at here. You have prospect overview, just kind of shows the general information and who's in the lead, which is Virginia. Then you can see we get bonus points. Uh, this is basically how recruiting works now. Instead of pitching proximity to home or academic prestige, you get bonus points for certain certain attributes of your school that are positive so currently we have 225 bonus points which we don't even have to worry about that's automatically given and it's different for every player obviously so some will have more some will have less it just depends on the grade of your school and how important it is to that recruit and then scouting there you go if I wanted to I could scout up to 10 percent of his ratings for 50 points, as you can see, I have a thousand points to put into scouting. All right, okay, now we can check our depth chart out. I know this is a lot, but uh, we got to get all this stuff going. And plus, I know you guys probably do want to see what kind of guys we have to work with. And the starting quarterback is Taylor Heineke. Is that how you say it? I, I'm guessing. I apologize if I messed up his name, you can correct me, because I'm going to be saying his name all season, so. There you go, 81 overall, 75 speed, so he has some decent, he can run if he needs to, he's not going to be like a Braxton Miller, Taylor Martinez kind of guy, but throw power 83, throw power 85, nice, and uh, he is an impact player, so that's good, and David Washington, let's see, what what is his throwing ratings? Or what are? Oh, they're not very good. But he's got a decent speed rating, so... Then we have Tyree Lee, another impact player. 89 speed, 90 acceleration. Spin moves alright, stiff arms alright. Juke moves good. Good, alright. And decent speed in the backup positions as well, so there we go. They have Melvin Vaughn at fullback. Larry Pinkard... I don't like a receiver being the second part of that depth chart. We'll put a tight end as a secondary fullback. And then receiver, we have Antonio Vaughn. Is he related? It's just a coincidence, maybe. Antonio Vaughn, 85 speed, 91 acceleration. Blair Roberts. Larry Pinkard. Jack Jaquel Bailey. Markel Thomas. And Kirk Spellman. Let's look at their... Let's look at their catching ratings. Alright, so they're all kind of in the 70s, upper 60s. 
Nothing amazing. Bailey's got some really good route running ratings. What is our size looking at here? Vaughn's 5'8". Blair Roberts 6'3". Well, that's quite a difference right there. 6 foot, 5'11", 6'3". Alright, so decent. Connor Martin and Gerard Shillow at tight end. What are they? All right, catching ratings. Are they more blockers? Run. Okay, yeah, decent blocking ratings. Although could use better run blocks from those guys. We have Jack Lowney at left tackle. Backing up him is Mike Justice. David Bourne, left guard, 76 overall, 87 strength. Josh Mann, 68. DJ Morrell, 70. Connor Mooborn, Mo, Mo, Mooborn, 71 overall. And then we go to the defensive side, Julian Rudolph at left end, 71 overall. I'm not going to go into all their individual ratings, it's just too much. Alex Johnson, not a very good overall there. Backed up by Andrew Everett. Then at defensive tackle, Dominique Gawin Bailey. Nate Barnes and Galen Evans, probably those are the only guys you'll see. John Darr, 73 overall. TJ Ricks, left outside linebacker. Caleb Taylor and DJ Simon, middle linebacker. Also TJ Armstrong. And then right outside linebacker, Larry Alston, Rob Mahan. Cornerback, Eric with a Q. <laughs> Eric with a Q, Lewis. Reggie Owens, Aaron Evans, Javon Neal, and Keenan Terry. Probably, I'll probably see all these guys actually. Paul Morant, 74 overall, that's pretty good actually. Andre Simmons, actually go back, because uh, I'd rather we have like a safety, a strong safety back to be the third position there. And then, just do that, whatever. Malik Johnson and Corey Taylor are at strong safety, not too bad. Kicker is Jared Brown, let's, let's just look at his kick ratings. Well, we're at it. 77, 71. Okay, that's not terrible. And then Ricky Seegers. Seegers. I think it's Seegers. At punter. And then who is returning? With Aaron Evans. Let's look at their ratings here. Speed, acceleration is pretty good. And Antonio Vaughn takes the punts. Interestingly enough. Okay. So that is Old Dominion for you guys. Um, I know in the depth chart, it's a lot just to kind of look at that stuff. We'll see how they actually play. <sighs> not going to choose extra pipeline. It actually costs real money, which I'm not going to spend. Ah, here we go. Schedule. All right, so the thing with Old Dominion this year is that they play basically half a half FBS schedule in real life. So as you notice here, we have one, two, three, four... FCS teams and we need to take care of those guys because I'm not going to play FCS generic teams because for one they're easy wins and two they dis they completely kill your strength of schedule as you can see I have an F for a strength of schedule which is the worst I have adjusted the schedule and as you can see we went from an F rating to a C minus strength of schedule so not bad um, it is the first year in the FBS and we're an independent so Pretty much have completely free reign over scheduling goes. Or as far as scheduling is concerned. So that's the one thing I like about being an independent is that you can basically schedule anyone anytime. Obviously if they're available in, you know, the weeks that you have open. So, quick rundown. At ECU in week one at Maryland versus Virginia Tech, a rivalry game. At Utah State, versus South Alabama, versus Navy, versus Bowling Green. At Pittsburgh, at New Mexico State, bye week against Idaho, and then at Army, at, whoops, at North Carolina. And yes, that is seven away games. I usually like to have it six home games, six away games, but I wanted to keep it as true to the real-life schedule. I switched the Idaho game to a home game because otherwise it would have been eight away games, and I really didn't want to do that. <laughs> I wanted to 
at least one more home game. I, I think eight away games is a little absurd, so there you go. That is our schedule this season, and next season we will be going into Conference USA. That's why I said the one change in custom conferences will be just that. It will be moving Old Dominion to Conference USA, because that's what will be happening in real life. So, I would like to keep the changes. And now, finally, we can do this. Start season. Boom. Here we go. It's about to happen. We're about to start this. We've done it. We've started the season. Going to coach skill trees. XP goals. Here we can look at this. Uh, so you get certain XP rewards for accomplishing certain things. Look at all this. If you get finalists for certain awards or winning awards, that's pretty great. Big games. Win 100% versus rivals, beat a rival, beat a top 25. So all this stuff. Every time you score a touchdown, you get 25 XP. Look at this. Sweet. Wow, okay, that's pretty cool. Just for accomplishing certain things in a game. Pro Draft. That's cool. Man, this is awesome. NCAA Records. Look at all this. This is beautiful. So many things. Sign a Prospect, 25 points. Sign a gem, steal, look at all this. So you could seriously level up big time if you accomplished all these things. Let's look at all the rewards you get. Wow, this just keeps this keeps going. Like what in the world? Ten consecutive wins be ranked. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. I'm sorry, this a lot of this is just really new to me, so. Um, they really added a lot of stuff from last year. Look at the coaches poll because that's Alabama 1, Ohio State 2, Stanford 3, A&M 4, Georgia 5. Nothing really uh, shocking here. Alright, there we go. That's that. Top 25 there. Uh, so next time, I'm not going to get into recruiting right now, but next time... When we start week one, you'll get to see me do recruiting, and then we will get into our very first game, which is, in fact, against ECU. Now, granted, the Independence is not a conference, so these aren't really standings as far as conference outlook goes. Heisman Watch, we'll just get a quick look at some of these things before we get going. Manziel... They're thinking might win it again. McCarran, Miller, Bridgewater, and Mariota. Pretty much a predictable Heisman look. Um, but that's pretty much it. We've done everything we need to do in the preseason. We just got to take care of some recruiting. And then we'll get on to our first game against the Eastern Carolina Pirates. Who are much better rated than we are. <laughs> so, thanks for watching everybody. See you all next time.